Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Soap the Great, and I'm bringing you another episode of Building This City on the Adventure Time multiplayer server. Now in the last episode, we did a little bit of work, and then I showed off this base design. Uh, I did not build any of this on camera because it is a little bit difficult for me to be placing the scaffolding and doing all the work and switching between views to make sure that I'm getting this right. So um, I am sorry for that, but uh, I hope you enjoy the end product. Do let me know in the comments. But in the last episode, um, I briefly showed this thing back here. Just gave you a little glimpse as I was showing off the design. And I didn't want to go into too much depth there because I wanted to show this in its own episode. And here we are. We've got a little statue made of gold blocks. And nice little detail on the ender pearl eyes. There's a bunch of gold blocks. That's a lot, don't you think? Now our gold farm is sufficient, but it would take a long time going AFK at that thing uh, just to get this level of gold. And uh, it makes me think that there might be something a little more, I don't know, more efficient? Uh, we'll see. Uh, the other thing I noticed uh, after I saw this guy is we've got all of the lights lit on the potion brewer which means we've got a something little extra here what is that thing let's go take a look at this dropper <gasps> wow gassed tears we've got 27 right there if my math yeah math is correct three times uh, nine 27 plus the one so 28 total and ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you I have not gotten one gas tier on this server. I've done some on my single player world, but not here, which means these are a gift and a very kingly gift. And I think the same person that gave me these gold blocks is the one that gave me those gas tiers. So I will let you hazard a guess. You can put it in the comments below real quick because you don't have much time before I show you. Um, what could he be doing with gold blocks? and gas tears. Hmm. Take a guess. Put it in the comments below. But this is a build by Caleb and we need to go through the nether to get there. And we've got to go through the nether rail station. So I'm going to save you a little bit of that trip over there and I will just meet you at the rail station and then we'll go on from there. So I will see you in just a moment. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here at the nether rail station. And you can see Caleb has done a little bit more work back here. In fact, he told me the secret here. Check this out. Ooh. Yeah, he's got a nice little base back here. And, uh, yeah, he put a bunch of storage and stuff down here. This is kind of his main area now. But it, it does a good job. Just a little bud switch, and it closes that door. Things are a little bit odd as far as the animations go because of Optifine, so I'm sorry for that, but, uh, you know, I'm still saving up for a new computer, and once we get to the new computer, then uh, we'll be able to get a little bit better as far as the recording goes, but um, that ghast is going to annoy me. So let's turn him down. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we got to figure out which station we want to go to. I think it's going to be this one. So there we go. The light is on. We're going to head on, grab a minecart, and uh, we'll get going, okay? Hopefully that is not too loud. When I've done these trips in the past, it has tended to not be so bad as far as the noise goes. So I'm just going to leave it as is, not mess with it. Let's have a little chat, okay, shall we? So, uh, this is the what we call the Adventure Time multiplayer server. It is a server shared by uh, fellow co-workers and myself. And I just want to talk a little bit about it. Uh, the server was started by Sturmfear and Aztin. And uh, they just had it going on one of the computers at work. 
uh, during lunch breaks only, and then Partially Mocked and myself started a little bit after that, and um, we decided to put it on a third-party system so we could access it pretty much any time. And so here we are. Uh, Sturmfear and Aztin have, you know, gotten other interests and other things in life have uh, kind of taken over for the time being and uh, interest in Minecraft has waned a little bit. So um, for me, the interest has not waned. So um, I have taken over on the server maintenance. So uh, that is just um, just how it is for the time being. And uh, so I'm I'm managing the server, and uh, and then I'm doing these. But one of the things is that it is a private whitelisted server, and the rules for applications are: uh, you must be a coworker, and you must play Minecraft. And uh, if you don't meet those two, then uh, it'll be it would be very difficult to get on the server. And uh, one of the things that uh, has been happening not very frequently but from time to time um, I've been getting some uh, some uh, requests to join and uh, it's just not gonna happen uh, we, we want to keep this to a pretty small uh, core group of people and uh, you know I say all that because we do have a new person that has joined the server um, we just did some hiring and it turns out that a number of them play Minecraft, so they will be joining us. But one has actually joined, and we'll see him around. But uh, we'll we'll see what he brings in. But uh, here is the farm that I wanted to show you. You can see Caleb has left his mark here, a little creeper face up top, and his name. And this is a three-in-one farm. It is based mostly on Impulse SV's design. I'm, I'm guessing that is one of the inspirations, but uh, he he added a few of his own touches, and uh, one of which happens. Well, you can't see it there. You can see it on the other side. I wonder if I can get over there. Uh, let's see. This is a bit frightening, seeing as how high it is. And uh, we'll get over here. You can see right here there are these light blocks and any time this piston extends with the redstone block that light will go off it adds a little bit of lag but it is a pretty cool look when you are seeing it from the AFK platform let's go on down there um, well anyway let's let's explain the concept real quick this is a spawning platform okay pigmen and uh, magma cubes and uh, what else? Ghasts will spawn up here. They'll trigger the trip wire, and that floor is going to start shifting back and forth, and that'll move the or that'll glitch the pigment and magma cubes down. The ghasts happen to get caught up here in a little suffocation area, and that gives them suffocation damage and reduces them hopefully to gas tears, but most of the time to gunpowder. Uh, they spawn rather rarely because they have such huge spawning requirements. So even from an overnight AFK stay that I did, I got five gas tiers, which is, uh, I guess, pretty good for this thing. I don't know. Um, maybe we can see, depending on the video settings and all that. But the drop floor is down here, and there are hopper mine carts going back and forth. And Caleb had a time getting these going. You used to have like one or two just going and um, they kept getting stuck and he had all sorts of problems. So he just went to that design of a bunch going back and forth and those bring all of the drops to one spot. Where is that? Maybe it's on one side. Yeah, it's over there. And then all of the drops go through a hopper line under this platform and they go down to the sorting area, which is down here. And it's pretty pretty simple. Uh, we got the rotten flesh, two double chests. Uh, how much more could you need, really? And then the gold nuggets. Uh, there's not much here because I haven't been here for too long. And there is overflow. Let's see. The overflow of the rotten flesh gets thrown into lava. 
and we might hear some go through. Ah, yes, incinerator. And then all the other stuff goes over here. But again, I have not been doing AFK, so uh, we're not going to see too many. Let's let's go up there real quick, and I'll try and get a few of the mobs dropping. But again, I am on a lower video setting, so it may not work so well. Uh, let's let's see. Let's just go up real quick to. 10 and see what that does. See if we get anything. Oh, the light should show up. There we go. You know, it's it's pretty dismal at this at this video rate, but that's, you know, that's just the way the cookie crumbles here. So, I'm not too worried about it when there is time for AFK and I'm not recording. Um, I usually use a smaller window size and I can turn up those video settings and not have any issues. And besides, since I'm not playing, the uh, potential lag is not a problem. That is that is the three-in-one farm. It has been fairly useful. Lots of gold out of it. Gas tiers, so we will be using this in the future. It's very efficient, too. So let's just head on back to the base. You can see he did a lot of work to make sure that this was non-spawnable. And the funny thing is that the three-in-one farm happens to be pretty close uh, to my portals. So when you are AFKing up there, you're close enough that my portal gets loaded and a lot of pigmen start spawning, or can spawn. And if you're going AFK, then the pigmen will spawn like crazy overnight and they'll go into my base. And so I've come back to pigmen coming in and magma cubes sometimes and that's not from the portal spawning that's just from the regular nether spawning but uh, it's a bit disconcerting and that's why the iron golem is hanging out and about in my base so uh, so yeah if you were wondering about that that's why it's because of the three-in-one farm and the unwanted guests that appear so we are gonna head back to my base and we're going to get a little bit of work done on the overall design. But uh, I will meet you back there. And uh, we'll probably do... Well, let's see. Let's get out of this minecart. There we go. Um, we will probably do a before and after rather than build it on camera. And again, that's because I really do not... I don't do a good job of building and doing all the block placement so I need to work on that but uh, I don't want to subject you to it at the moment so um, so yeah I will meet you back at the base and uh, we'll go from there so see you in a bit all right ladies and gentlemen we're back and here we go this this is the design that uh, I've been playing with kind of the messy design that gliss and uh, from high pixel uh, tends to do and he taught that to B00, and I'd been watching the Building with B00 series when he switched over to the castle. And this is my take on it. Um, not as much of a, a set theme as far as keeping this five wide area all the way down. We've got a mix of, uh, of widths, but uh, here and here are the same, and then here and here are the same. And uh, we've got this design here for this one side. And what I want to do is I want to copy it over here. So kind of symmetric. It's not fully symmetric because the width on the potion brewer and the um, auto furnace thing is not the same as the storage room and the, well, what will be the stable and farms area. Um, so it's it's not exactly symmetric this portal cube is not exactly in the middle but it's close enough we got design elements tying it all together and we've got a color scheme with the green clay the spruce wood and the dark oak planks so what we're gonna do is we're gonna knock this guy down sorry Caleb but uh, he's gotta go we gotta move the, uh, the this little farm it was always temporary 
So we're going to move it, and it's eventually going to go into the uh, the farm area, like I mentioned, up there, the stables and farm farms. And then we're going to put a little decoration up here. We're going to finish out the ceiling. There's a lot of stuff to be done, but I think I'm going to do mo you know what? I'm going to do all of that off camera. So I'm sorry. It's just one of the things I have a hard time building, uh, talking and building. So uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to just go like this. And when we come back in just a moment, well, no, we'll go like this for the before. And then now we're at the after. So let's take a look. You already see some of the floor. It's all changed. Ta-da! Progress has been made, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Here we go. So, uh, we've knocked out the statue. We moved the melon and pumpkin farms. We put this in. We blew out that wall, really. So we pushed it back. It, it used to be right here. And just blew it out. Pushed this all the way back. This design is an exact replica of what's at the front and then uh, this is different from what's up front and it's definitely different from here this is three wide that's what we've got and this is two wide that's all we've got there because the uh, auto furnace thing is just one wider than the potion brewing room but uh, continued the overall design with the spruce wood green clay, dark oak planks, and stairs, and uh, mostly stone, just varying up the textures with the stone brick, smooth stone slabs, and cobble mixed in. We've got a little bit of lighting just kind of peeking through. It doesn't actually provide any actual lighting because uh, that blocks the block light from coming through, but you can get a hint of it, and it's rather nice. So, So there we go. Um, I hope you're not too disappointed that I didn't bring you along for the building process, but I just wanted to get it done. There's the ceiling continued on through, and there's that design up top. Um, what I found, you know, the potion brewer is an odd length, kind of like the storage area and the stables and farm. This is even, however. So what I did is I split it into two odd sections. This is 18 wide, I think. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. So it's nine each. Um, I bookended them with that setup right there. Got the bushes going. I wanted to bring in some foliage, and I really like the spruce wood, at least at the moment, on the respawn network slash uh, former XPD. I did have some jungle leaves, but I ended up taking those out. We got some some uh, spruce leaves. Do I have any spruce leaves on me? Oh, spoiler alert. Yeah, don't look at that. Um, and then over here, I put in some more of the foliage. But the things still to do. We need to finish out this floor. And this is not the final design. I just d decided to put down stone bricks because they're easy. They've got texture built in. But we've got to pull that out, try something. I don't know. We'll see. If you've got some suggestions for what the floor should look like, do, do give me some suggestions, okay? Maybe um, put something in, in a creative world or I don't know. Just uh, let me know what you think, comments, or catch me on Twitter at MC Soap the Great. But, uh, but yeah, uh, next thing. We also need to move these guys because uh, this is not their final home. They're going to be in here. We've got stables that we're, we're going to go in here. Here's my to-do list, actually. Um, let's see. What have we taken care of? Actually, none of that yet. So, um, you know, we, we've gotten the design done. So now we can start on some more of the farms back here and uh, kind of make this a little bit more self-sufficient instead of having to run to spawn all the time for food and, uh, you know, basic stuff like that. But, uh, but yeah, there we go. What do you think? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Let me know. Um, I would love to hear from you. Um, for now, oh, there's one more thing. Uh, we'll put this here. You notice that I've covered in the pillars. 
and before I had little holes in them just to walk through um, and this is actually from a tutorial that I did and I did the tutorial as a result of needing this door okay I, I wanted a column door where the column was kind of in a relief from the wall so I didn't want any pistons showing right there and this is what I came up with it's a dual piston or dual yeah dual piston extender and that just pushes those uh, pillar quartz out and we've got the little switch there there we go and we'll just put that back on just to open it up and then over here we got this one as well and if we come back here we'll see I did a little bit of work on this thing because the uh, the mechanics for the door were interfering with everything on this side of the storage area and then uh, I had to run a little tunnel actually I needed to do this before because I cut the previous one all the way off right there but uh, this is how to access the interstitial space. Uh, we just get to it through here. Do you know what interstitial space is? It's, uh, it's in buildings. When you have multiple stories in a building, there's generally more space above the ceiling or between the ceiling of one floor and the floor of the next one or the ceiling of one story and the floor of the next story rather and that's so they can run cables more easily and and the various HVAC ducts and all that um, all the stuff that it's got all the infrastructure so that's the same case here we've got some interstitial space down there and that's where uh, a lot of the um, a lot of the guts for this whole base are going to be hidden but uh, but yeah so we still need to do the floor we need to hide all these torches Probably put some glowstone and carpet down. Um, we'll figure out something, but there's still a lot of work to be done. And uh, yeah, so hopefully you're enjoying that. Um, and if you want me to do some building on camera, do let me know. I tend to do better on the redstone on camera. Uh, maybe not so much with this, but uh, but yeah, let me know. Um, and let me go check the length of the video, and if we've got time we're going to take care of something at spawn okay so I will be back in just a moment hello ladies and gentlemen uh, we are back at spawn I've got a little bit more time not too much but uh, we're back at spawn and I'm gonna do a little cleanup here uh, not, well not cleanup but I wanna make things a little bit more automated so this is where we get our sugar cane okay and and it's a highly manual process well maybe not highly manual we can we press this button and it triggers a, a set of pistons upstairs and that's where our sugarcane farm is uh, it's, in fact it's right back here okay so uh, that that uh, line of, of redstone or there's a line of redstone that comes out of that button that I just showed you and it comes up here and runs this set of redstone right here which goes into both sides and that is what triggers our uh, our reed farm okay so uh, those pistons push the sugarcane out into that water stream which carries it down into the hopper that you saw below well I want things a little bit more automated because we're not always here at spawn so what I've done is I've attached this extra switch here and you will see that it is run by a daylight sensor and it's not fully hooked up because I wanted to show you how this particular piece works this is a dual edge detector okay so what it what that means is that it will send a pulse when the circuit turns on and when the circuit turns off so let me just show you that real quick and you'll hear it um, when those pistons extend okay real quick you see that the pistons extended when I turned on the circuit uh, and it was just a pulse okay so then we turn off and it pulses again okay it's all well and good well what we want to do is we want to make this run on a daylight sensor there we go so at, in the morning 
when this thing turns on we're going to get a pulse out of here and that will run the pistons again and when it turns night it's going to do the same thing so we're going to get two pulses a day which is enough um, so it's not a clock per se it is a clock in one sense in that it is controlled by the game but because it's the game that is doing it I don't feel so bad. I, I want to try and avoid clocks running here at spawn because of the potential for lag. Because redstone does run at spawn, okay? Or if you're in the spawn chunks, and this is definitely within the spawn chunks. That's in the spawn chunks. So uh, we are here, and I want to avoid clocks. So we're just going to use the daylight cycle, and and hopefully it will work. I don't know if plants grow when you're not nearby, but uh, I don't know, maybe I can look into some myth-busting stuff. If you happen to know, do let me know in the comments or on Twitter. But uh, that is it for now. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Got a little bit done both at base and, and here at spawn. So hopefully you are enjoying. And if you did enjoy this episode, do give it a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. And if you really enjoy, and if not done so already, think about subscribing. And let me know what you think of the base design and of, uh, of some of the stuff I'm doing around here. If you got any ideas for the base or for spawn here, let me know. I would love to hear them. Uh, let's see, still outstanding. I need another name for one of the breeder cats. And I need a name for one of the breeder dogs. So... Um, that would be greatly appreciated as well. I will definitely give you a shout out if you happen to do that for me. But uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for now. And uh, I will talk to you in the next episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>